For this project, we'll be using plastic Ziploc bags and some small piece of cardstock or watercolor paper and then washable markers. Doesn't matter what brand of the markers you have as long as they are washable. We're gonna begin by taking our plastic bag and even if you just have another random piece of plastic lying around, you could use that too. Whatever size bags you want, you could use, if you wanna do this on a larger project, you could use a gallon size bag and that would work as well. But we're just gonna be coloring different sections of the bag with marker. Now be careful where you put your fingers because the marker will come right off if you touch it. So try not to touch the areas that you've already colored. Ella is the one helping me today. She wanted to try something new, so we thought this would be a fun experiment. So Ella and I are both just picking random colors out of our marker container and are just trying to fill up the bag with some marker scribbles. And you can see it doesn't have to be any type of design. It can just be a lot of random splotches of color. You can also see that sometimes the marker doesn't cover super well, and that's okay. It'll still work to do this project. Now for this next section, I'm gonna be using a little spray bottle. You can see it here, it has some water in it. If you don't happen to have one of these at home, um, a larger spray bottle would work fine, or you could even just get like a damp cloth and wet the paper down with that. But we really wanna make sure for this next part that we are able to wet down the paper with some water. So for our purposes, we're gonna use this cute little spray bottle and I will be wetting it down. I'm just waiting for Ella to catch up here. So I'm gonna just spray all over my paper with this water so that it's kind of damp. And now I'm gonna put my marker coloring side down. So that's the top, flipping it over so that it's down and I'm gonna lay it right on top of my paper. And then I'm gonna use my fingers to kind of spread the color out onto the paper. And then I'll lift it up. And I still have some white left, so I'm gonna use another section and just kind of lay it down on the white part of my paper and then lift that up as well. And I can kind of keep doing that until my paper gets completely covered with paint. Or really, marker. We're gonna let Ella try too. So she's got the top part of her paper, her bag ready. I'm gonna set mine off to the side to dry. And I'm gonna spray her pa paper with water. And then let her lay it down. Now she laid it with the marker side up and look, nothing happened. So make sure that you switch it upside down put the marker side down and then she's going to spread it around with her fingers to let the color get onto the paper. Really pretty. Oh, look at that. Isn't that neat? She's going to finish by getting the section on the bottom that didn't get any color. And I'm gonna add a, a couple squirts to the side of hers just to make sure that the marker spreads over the, those white areas. Now's the hard part. Can't do anything more until it's dry. So we have to kind of walk away and let it dry for a bit. So here's what our pictures look like when they're dry. Aren't they cool? I love the different patterns that happened. All right, now we're going to do a silhouette on our picture. A silhouette is a drawing that is done in all black so you can't see any features of whatever you're drawing it's kind of like a black outline and then colored in with black and i actually didn't tell ella what we'd be, we'd be drawing so she was trying to guess the whole time what we were making it's kind of fun we, we like to do that so i'm starting with some of the basic shapes um, to make my silhouette and you could really put 
any silhouette on here. I decided a seahorse might be fun uh, just because the, the cards were a little bit taller and so I thought a seahorse would fit well. So I started with a larger circle top middle and then I made a smaller circle to the left of it and now I'm connecting them together. Now I'm doing a line that goes a little bit down the side or the middle of my paper and I'm gonna make kind of this oval at the bottom of my line like that. And I'm gonna of course color it in because this is a silhouette. It should be all in black or a dark color. It doesn't have to be black. And we're using Sharpie for this. You could try using markers as long as your paper is sure, for sure dry, a marker should be okay. Um, Sharpies are nice because even if they get wet, they won't bleed into the background. Now I'm gonna make this seahorse's head and neck a little bit thicker. So I'm connecting the two, the circle and the oval, and I'm adding a little bit of thickness in there in between them. You can see I've kind of curved my line on the left so that it's a nice smooth transition from the head to the neck, nice and thick. Then I'm gonna start at the bottom of the oval and I'm gonna go down a little farther and curl my line around for the seahorse's tail. Now I'm starting off with just a real skinny line and then you can see I'm going back in and making it wider. When making silhouettes, it's always best to start with some basic shapes and skinny lines and then going in and making them a little bit thicker as you draw. I do this when I draw animals as well. When I'm drawing a horse, like for example, I use some circles and stuff to make the body and then the legs, I just use a single line so they look like stick legs right away and then I go back and thicken them up. All right, we're missing those little spikes on the back of the seahorse and his little uh, fin wing things, so I'm gonna add those in. After Ella catches up with me, she's thickening up her tail as well. And now I'm gonna make a diagonal line that goes a little bit towards the top and then another one that goes towards the bottom. It almost looks like a V sideways. And I'm gonna start at the top one and I'm gonna make some C's, the letter C, down, 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 so that all of them connect. And then I will fill that in with black as well. So lots of C's connecting the two sections of the V's. I'm gonna follow those same steps on the top of the seahorse's head as well. So I'm gonna make kind of a V shape that goes off the top of the head. And then from this angle, it'll look like U's, a bunch of U's that are connected. For me, I could fit two in there. Two U's, or it looks like a W. And Ella's got hers as well. Looks like she could fit three. Then I'm gonna start there and I'm gonna make the same type of pattern all the way down at the back of my seahorse. So this is a bunch, a bunch of C's all connected or W's or U's, whatever letter you prefer. And I'm making sure that Ella's go up to a point, up to a point, up to a point. So you really have to make sure that you get those nice crisp points on there. And now we color. So I'm gonna take my time coloring in all of those little sections so that the silhouette is nice and solid. My seahorse looks good. And Ella is doing the same with hers. It's looking super awesome. I'm also gonna add another little one way up in the front too. 
connect to the front of the head. The last thing, of course, to do is add some bubbles coming up from the seahorse. Pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed doing this little activity with us. Please subscribe and hit that like button down below if you are enjoying these videos. Thanks, guys.